Dear viewers, uh, good morning. This is Silas Krenya, counseling psychologist. And um, we have been uh, discussing on matters of family. And last week uh, we discussed about something that uh, really affects so many families, and that is depression. And so today I would want uh, to focus a little more on the impact of depression on family members. Uh, because usually, uh, like last week, I focused much more on the one we seek but this week now we are focusing, of course, on the one we seek, but also the family members. So we begin with a word of prayer, and then we continue. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come by the means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. We welcome you, Holy Spirit of revelation and wisdom, that what we hear and experience through this talk will truly transform our lives, and will make us also agents of transformation. Give us consolation and give us grace to bear whatever it is, whatever the cross that comes in our way. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, um, as I have mentioned, today we are discussing about the impact of depression on the family members. But before we get there, I really just want to begin with our scripture. Uh, which I think is very, very uh, timely. And that is Psalms 46 from verse 1. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. Thus we do not fear, though earth be shaken and mountains quake on the depths of the sea, though its waters range and foam and mountains totter as its surging. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Now, that description begins with um, a verse that is talking about God is our strength and our refuge. An ever-present help in distress. Ever-present help in distress. So depression has a lot to do with distress. And therefore, as we do this, one of the key pillars of hope when it comes to depression is actually God. Even though I know when people are depressed, faith becomes really meaningless to them. But however, we will discuss that a little more towards the end, so that we get to know how can we find hope in God. And so today, just like I shared last week, I would want to mention um, you know, a little bit about what depression is, so that we can see how it impacts our families. If you follow from what I shared in last, um, last week, you will realize that someone who is depressed experiences a lot of changes in terms of their mind, the way they think, in terms of their emotions, the way they feel their moods, and also in their behavior, the way they act. And so there's, uh, all those areas of uh, our perspectives of a human being are altered in a way that they do not actually uh, experience life just like everybody else experiences. Because the moment you alter the human mind, then you have altered the whole life of a human being. If in this case, for example, um, we hinder maybe let's say the brain of a person, you may notice that there are some parts of the bodies that are likely to be immobile, or they are not going to cooperate. Maybe I've seen people who are really, really sick. They want to move their hands, but they're not able to because there's no proper coordination between the brain or the central nervous system and with the other part of the, of the body. And so this is exactly what happens when we are depressed. We, are in a, we become um, incapacitated in many ways. And therefore, we try to laugh like everybody else is laughing, but we have no interest there is nothing that excites us. We try to go and be with other people, but you feel you have no energy at all to be there with others. This really impacts our lives. And remember from what I shared the last week, that this is the disease of the mind. It's, it's actually the disease of the brain. And so it's something that you cannot just snap out. It is a illness like other illnesses. Consider this, that when you have a physical disease, when you have a physical illness, 
When you have a leg that is broken, people can easily tell, people can see, and they are actually able to sympathize with you or empathize with you, and they are able to understand what you're going through, and they work with you and support you. Even they notice, for example, you're not able to work, they can come and carry you around. If they notice that you're not able to maybe lift something, they can come and carry it for you. If they notice you cannot cook for your children, they can actually come and cook for you. And at the end of it all, you feel supported, you feel relaxed. And, and so that gives you a lot of consolation and support at that point. But when we discuss about mental illnesses, and particularly now today we are discussing about depression, you may realize that people will not know what you're going through. They will see in moons, like you in serious moons, negative moons, of course, when it is the day of your birthday. And so everybody is wondering what is happening with you. And they cannot see it, so they don't understand what is happening in your mind. And so that causes a lot of confusion, even for the people who are around us. And I think that's why even the Bible tells us, let your minds be transformed. Because the Word of God, or God himself knew, once our minds are transformed, then every other part of us actually becomes transformed. If you have been transformed to love, then you will realize that actually you love even those who hate you. You know, sometimes we make jokes, uh, like personally, when it comes to the area of forgiveness. I teach a lot on the area of forgiveness and how people to forgive each other. Because myself, I've been hurt several times in my life. And maybe I've been hurt even by the most important people, significant people in my life. But one of the key things that I learned is forgiveness really has nothing to do with the person who hurt me. Forgiveness is literally about me as a person. Because forgiveness is like, uh, unforgiveness in this case, is like having a key to the prison, but then still you imprison yourself. You have the key in the pocket. And so when you notice that, you actually now start aggressively dealing with issues of unforgiveness by learning how to forgive. And so as I was trying to learn how to forgive, one of the main reason, I mean one of the main lessons that I learned in the process is that when you forgive, you become free. And when you forgive, you become really someone who is able to drive and to have a life for your own. Because you don't go to the streets and you're feeling like you don't want to talk to someone. So when our minds are transformed and actually we realize the importance of forgiveness, then what happens is that forgiveness and forgiveness will not impact us and impact the lives of other people. Because unforgiveness itself can impact our minds, can impact our thoughts, can impact our emotions, can actually even cause physical sicknesses. And so that's why it's essential, uh, dear listeners and those who are following us from wherever you are, to actually let our minds be transformed. And because depression comes to impact our minds, then you realize that transforming our minds becomes almost impossible, and therefore our minds begin to lead us into actually affecting our lives and lives of others in a negative way. When we talk of depression, one of the key uh, uh, pillars of depression or one of the key signs that we see and we can tell that someone is grappling with mental health and particular depression is helplessness. And of course, even hopelessness as well. Now, I would want to look at those two elements of hopelessness and helplessness. Because what happens when you become helpless and hopeless, you stop trying. You actually stop trying, as in you feel like you have no energy whatsoever of trying. You've really dry, tried everything. You know, you tried waking up, you can't wake up. You're trying to tidy, I mean, make your room tidy, you cannot. You, you try to, to, to be nice and smile to your children, you cannot. So you stop trying. And you can imagine you're in a relationship and someone just withdraws and checks out, stops trying. You can imagine the challenge that happens even to the family members. They also stop caring because oftentimes 